This presentation may contain images of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are deceased or images of places with sacred or spiritual significance. We apologise if any images cause distress. We acknowledge all traditional owners past and present of the lands shown in this video. Hello, my name is Eric Wason. And my name is Linda Craig. And we are here to introduce some Aboriginal landowners who will tell you about the land management projects they've completed recently on Cape Book Peninsula. From July 2011 to December 2014, the Australian Government provided $4 million for some Aboriginal land management projects on Cape York Peninsula through the Caring for Our Country program. Queensland Government Departments, South Cape York Catchments and Balkanu Cape York Development Corporation each helped some of the Aboriginal landowners to deliver the projects. Nineteen Aboriginal land trusts and corporations were involved. Over 200 Aboriginal people worked on these projects. The work was done on Aboriginal freehold land and on National Parks Cape York Peninsula Aboriginal land, also called National Parks Saipal. These parks are jointly managed by the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service and the Aboriginal Land Trust or corporation that owns the land. So here are some of the projects and the people who worked on them. Bulgarawara Gare Land Trust. My name is Bulo Mukava. I'm traditional owner for you. I'm also a head ranger and chairman for Melson B. Gare Land Trust. This area is we created this as a um, fire break sort of thing. Cool burn is important so later on when wildfire do come through, it's already been here already, already burnt. And it also brings back natural grass. Yeah, we do control burns every year, probably once or twice a year. Oh, yeah. um, here you've got one of the sun, the ranger's done, all done together. We got a couple of these, as you've seen out in the front. Yeah, as we got here, I got the same for on our sign we got out in the front. Dumbun Murray, the medicine, medicine man. When you look real closely, you can see he's got stripes on his belly and he's got a flag, uh, like a feather on his head. When people, when the ancestors and that were sick, they had to go see this fella, the old medicine man, to make them better and get the old Dumbun Murray, medicine man. Okla Aboriginal Corporation. Caring for country work, I was involved um, in a project on Crosby, that's um, on the Okla country there. We done surveys with a couple of scientific fellows to do scientific study on the spring mounds. Um, being told there's about a hundred spring mounds there. Their features are very different than any other one um, that I know of in the Cape. We had kids with us and the old people, um, traditional owners with us. We done water, um, study on water plants with the rangers. And at night, we done um, bird life, what mammals and stuff were out in the, um, at night study. Also fish study, um, what um, fish lives in the lagoon, freshwater fish, and um, documented all. And out of that, we made a document of, of the spring mounds and um, what they believe, how it works and stuff. What, what I, we needed to do is match our cultural value on the spring mounds and it's our story places with the scientific value and um, we done that. So caring for country with money really helped us, you know, it pushed us a long way ahead. Wakuka Land Trust. Well the land trust I represent is um, the Wakuka Land Trust. The caring for country work that we've done was some fencing around our a uh, cultural side of ours, um, which is part of our dreaming story. And we also did about 4K of the boundary fence line between Wakuka Freehold and the National Park as well. Um, we also trained up seven guys from the Wakuka area in um, ACDC, uh, chainsaw, and we did eyes and ears training with um, Grumpa as well, which was pretty good. Going back on the country was probably the best thing for us because um, there was a couple of guys in our group um, that were from the country that never been there. I think now that we got a couple of guys that are trained to do spraying and that, um, that's 
a, that's a benefit for our, um, our area. Junju Wara Aboriginal Corporation. Junju traditional owners did a flora and fauna survey at Munbra. They found some endemic and threatened species. Junju people also surveyed and controlled weeds at Munbra. Sickle pot and lantana were some of the weeds they controlled. Junjuwara also carried out seagrass surveys using both Caring for Our Country and other funding. Tarpa Land Trust. The funding was uh, a great help because it uh, just got us on the map. It yeah, got us on the map to get us started. The wheel started turning for Darpa and the young people and the young people were looking forward to it. It's good to be out there looking, helping, doing all these things, um, spraying and stuff to look after the land there, instead of sitting back at home doing nothing. Uh. The giant sensitive weed was starting to take over our paddock up there and that's, that's where we started. During last year, a couple of people was up there spraying those uh, sickle pots and stuff. Sickle pots, uh, sensitive weed and Pretty good keeping the um, grass Keep them all under control. Uh, that funding was a real, you know, real help and uh, it opened a lot of our young people's eyes and uh, minds and now they know that they can do something with that land and there'll be employment created. And uh, now more and more are coming forward and asking if there's a position there. Lama Lama Land Trust. The Lama Lama people produced community newsletters and completed a variety of projects. Working work experience programs that we have on country, um, the fencing of the Marina Plains, Luba Swamp area, um, weed control at Marpa, Marina Plains and the Lilyvale pastoral properties, plants and animal survey training. So that's basically what we look for add on our country working on it. There's those projects and those things happening there for us. Funding for the junior ranger and school leavers, um, like work experience for the school leavers when they left school, and more training. Caring for Our Country funding also complemented training and employment that was funded through other programs, such as working on country and skilling Queenslanders for work. With that training I was able to use, utilise those skills to move from a trainee to a casual to a full-time position. With all the training that I did with weeds and water quality testing and stuff like that, um, I got to uh, use that as a tool to uh, better understand the cultural side of it as well. Rinyiru Lakefield, Aboriginal Corporation. Speaking on the Sea Fox um, funding from the Commonwealth was um, a great um, result came out of that. And we had some ranger training, uh, weed control, and then we had the muster because we, we know at the end of the day all the cattle got to be off the park because it's just a park where we've got to look after. They learnt a lot of um, stock work, um, cattle handling, um, uh, cattle husbandry, uh, uh, rectifying fence and pulling down fence, old fence lines, um, uh, working as a team, uh, looking after each other out in remote area, isolated countries. And um, it, it just brought them a, a better understanding of um, working on country. It's different from working down in mainstream. My name is Stephen Simon and I'm a um, TO for this area, Lakefield National Park. I work for Renewal on a project up here of weed um, removements, moving weeds out of place. We're just doing some rubber vines. We're going to spray with some diesel and access. We're going to control the spreading. We've done this about three weeks ago, and it takes about 10 days for it to fully die. With the animals around here, the seeds get stuck on their fares and body, and they take it into um, other places that affects the park and 
what are we doing as renewal ranges is to um, remove them all from the national park. With the funding that we're getting, it's helping us a lot. We got the land back. We did everything. Now it's your turn to take over because you're going to be the future. And we want you younger ones now to make sure that you look after the park, just like our elders did. Cape Melville, Flinders and Howick Islands Aboriginal Corporation. Traditional owners Regan Hart, Philip Walker and Daniel Gordon worked on a vegetation survey in Cape Melville National Park Saipal. They identified 294 plant species. With the Cape Melville National Park, uh, we did a veg survey within um, the northern part of the, the Cape Melville area. Traditional owners also controlled sickle pod at Wakuka Creek within Cape Melville National Park Saipal. It was actually a big eye-opener to me just to see the scope of work that needs to be done in that particular area when it comes to weed work. Uh, what I've learned is um, with the amount of visitation that's in that area, there's a lot of weeds that are coming in. Out of the veg survey, there was a suggestion come out that we map the roads because where there's roads, there's weeds. Going up there and seeing the whole ecosystem, which is pretty much untouched. Yeah, it's a pretty spectacular place. Wantalpu Land Trust. Yeah, um, the boys did uh, uh, roughly around about two months um, land tenor um, work in, in um, Lava Hill Nature Refuge. Uh, they also, I think they spent about three months um, fencing Belkluva Nature Refuge uh, to exclude feral animal. One of the things that um, we, we wanted to achieve is basically protect the spring systems in there and the wetland. But yeah, if we don't go back and do, do more lantana eradication, yeah, I mean, fire is a with lantana, it's going to de de destroy that area. And Employment for a start and just being with the young fellas, seeing what they can do, yeah, make you proud and make you see that we can do it, you know. Bubba Gudjan, Aboriginal Corporation. Traditional owners for Munthi Jack River National Park Saipal worked on a vegetation survey with botanists. The Munthi survey identified 440 plant species that were new records for the park. Darapa traditional owners worked on a vegetation survey in Darapa National Park Saipal. The Darapa survey found 97 plant species that were new records for the park. After both field trips, the findings were presented at separate workshops to other traditional owners. Ergoi Kangand National Park Land Trust. Uh, building an 18 kilometre fence on Ergoi Kangand National Park to help um, manage a, make a clear boundary and to deal with um, managing cattle on the National Park. Trish Lan has drafted a management plan for the park. The plan gives direction for future natural and cultural resource management. Batavia Traditional Owners Aboriginal Corporation Batavia Traditional Owners completed a five-week on-country training program in land management skills. As part of the training, traditional owners carried out cultural mapping, weed surveys and weed control. They also gained relevant qualifications, for example in firefighting. South Cape York Catchments coordinated a pond apple survey and control project involving multiple entrusts. Over two weeks, traditional owners completed a pond apple survey of 400 kilometres of the east coast of Cape York Peninsula. Traditional owners then carried out control at strategic locations. Seven more land trusts carried out Caring for Our Country projects. They were Kalpawa, Kula, Kukuyau, Kirawanda Tingalkul, Oyala Tumatang, Tulka and Yukubaja Muluku. These land trusts carried out a range of work on country, including control of olive hymenacne, gamba grass, lantana and other significant weeds, fauna surveys, cattle exclusion fencing and fire management planning. 
This was just a quick look at some of the great projects that Aboriginal traditional owners completed under the Caring for Our Country program on Cape York Peninsula. There is still a lot of work to do. Aboriginal traditional owners are keen to manage their lands as well as possible. Probably getting people back on country is the main thing because we've been out of the country for a long time now. Um, getting up there and starting a database with animals, plants, um, cultural sites and just general park, parks works. Well, it's taking care of the countries, you know, for the younger ones is to go back and live there and uh, I reckon they would be proud that they'd be working in their own country. And more, more of the fencing, as um, boundary lines need to be all sealed off um, and um, looking at more um, permanent positions as well for the the Land Trust boys that uh, show interest in, in this type of work, conservation work. We would like to thank the Australian Government for providing these Caring for Our Country funds. We would also like to thank all the participants and supporters of these projects. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you want more information about any of the projects described here, please contact the Cape York Peninsula Tenure Resolution Program.